Remember that crazy killer clown phase from a few years back? The one that caused McDonald's to get rid of their creepy ass clown mascot from their stores? Thank God. Where these absolute lunatics and people with an apparent death wish would go around dressed as clowns, brandishing weapons, wandering around neighborhoods and near schools trying to terrify kids. Good wholesome fun, I know. But apparently, this isn't something that the universe just decided as a collective, this is what we're going to be doing with our spare time from now on. No, apparently it all started here, with the creepy, kind of menacing, Wrinkles the Clown. And they made a documentary on him where he basically just snitches on himself. Yeah, obviously this isn't a real supernatural child-eating clown. But the thing is with mysteries is when you reveal all of its little hidden secrets, well, it's not a mystery anymore. It's just some dude named Greg who likes fancy dress and also traumatizing kids. Ah oh man, I thought this really was a demonic clown who snatched up naughty children in the night. Let's be real, I don't think we needed the help of those meddling kids and their dogs at Mystery Inc. to get to the bottom of this one. I also doubt that you'll need any help finding any awesome new shows with today's sponsor Sundance. Oh, I'm smooth. You may not find a creepy clown hiding under your bed waiting for a midnight snack, but you will find thousands of hours of binge-worthy content across all of your favorite devices for $4.99 a month. With a refreshing collection of content, exclusives, and new shows being added every week, you're bound to find something that's right up your alley. Hopefully not a creepy looking clown. You don't want to find one of them in your alley. My girlfriend and I have recently been using Sundance to enjoy the show A Discovery of Witches, now on its final season of the fan favorite fantasy series based on the All Souls trilogy by Deb Harkness. With it coming to an end very soon, now is a better time than any to actually jump in and start binging it. Because let's be real, we all hate waiting for new episodes to come out. All I'm gonna say is that it involves witches, vampires, and time travel. So from that sentence alone, you can probably tell that it's gonna be a pretty wild ride. So if you don't want the creepy under the bed dwelling clown to come and get you, check out Sundance for thousands of hours of awesome content and start streaming your next obsession now. Try Sundance for free for 30 days by going to sundancenow.com and use promo code BIGWILL or the clown's gonna get ya. According to the documentary, it all started here, with this home security footage of a camera pointed directly at a little girl's bed. Which is honestly kind of questionable in itself. But the real creepiness starts to happen as the drawer beneath the bed begins to open and a clown emerges. Which I'm sure triggers something that's deeply repressed in all of our brains. Because when we were children, we thought there were creepy monsters under our bed that would come out and snatch us up at night. What, just me? Yeah, I'm normal, right? He looks at the girl, grabs the camera, and then it ends. Leaving the viewer thinking, what in the hell did I just watch? Does he leave? Does he harm the child? What's going on here? And boom, you've got yourself a creepy viral video that nine-year-olds are gonna eat up like Cocoa Pops. That'll also go on to inspire some rather stupid people to go and do some rather stupid things. Like dressing up like a clown and terrorizing people in a country where everybody and their mother is packing. Now I'm no expert in these matters, but you might wanna... not do that? That under the bed dwelling clown is Wrinkles the Clown, and around the town that he operates from are many different stickers with his face and phone number on. Because sure, why wouldn't you call up this demonic looking clown with no eyes? What service does this clown offer you may ask? Does he show up at children's birthday parties giving everybody a big ol' laugh? Or does he show up outside of their windows at night, deeply traumatizing them for the rest of their lives? Well, I think this guy showing up in any of those scenarios will deeply traumatize any child for the rest of their life. So with this undeniably rather unsettling mystery coming to life, the documentary basically goes on to remove any of the unknown aspects that the urban legend of Wrinkles the Clown may have had. They follow him around his daily life when he's not dressed up terrifying kids for cash. It kind of removes the whole mystery aspect of it when you see the guy cooking up his eggs in the morning to get his protein in. When he's still this unknown, creepy looking figure, for all we know, he could have got his protein from the organs of children. But that's ridiculous, Will, you might say. Well, I don't know how good of a protein source child organs are. He drives around in his white van, and yes, I know what you're thinking, get your mind out of the gutter, that's where he lives, and cooks his eggs. He likes to barbecue fish wherever he likes, that being one of the many perks of living the hashtag van life, and he likes to hit up the strip club. You know, one of the lads. But it's actually kind of sad when you hear this old dude say that he's just living out his last days, unsure what else he could really do, and with him saying that he would have preferred to have found a partner to settle down with by now, but unfortunately he's just too ashamed to bring them back to his van. Am I starting to feel sorry for some guy in his 60s going around scaring children for a couple of bucks? Yes I am. It's a little bit funny, I'm not gonna lie. He states that he only ended up in this line of work, that being giving kids post-traumatic stress disorder, because when he originally became a clown, he was doing it the tried and true way of making people laugh. The only problem being, 
nobody would hire him. Either he just wasn't very good at what he did, or that nobody hired him because he's a clown, and who the hell still hires clowns? So he came up with the idea of instead of bringing children joy, he'll bring them suffering. So basically he went all bane on everybody. No one cared who I was till I put on the mask. He basically became something of a local boogeyman that parents use to keep their kids from acting up. You know, instead of whipping them with a belt, make them think that some creepy child kidnapping clown is coming to take them away in the night. I'm sure that'll have no unforeseen effects later on down the line. We hear plenty of different phone calls of parents calling up wrinkles to tell him about their naughty kids. Meanwhile, little Timmy is in the background screaming his head off because he thinks his mother's just sold him out to some sort of demon clown. Obviously his methods have caused dividing opinions on the whole being a terrifying clown sort of thing, with people calling up to praise him, saying that what he's doing is hilarious and awesome, to straight up literal death threats, of which he gets multiple a day. With people threatening him with all sorts, from shooting, to stabbing, to getting his cranium rearranged with a baseball bat and everything in between. And that's not just coming from scrawny kids thinking they're tough by the way, it's also coming from scrawny adults who think they're tough. Apparently there's a few concerned and possibly mentally unhinged law abiding members of society out there who should probably be on a watch list, or several, who think the solution to wrinkles and his antics is a short drop and a sudden stop. The documentary has a child psychologist on for all but 30 seconds, and after listening to a few of the voicemails with petrified children in the background, he's like, yeah this is f***ed up. He says repeat usage of this method is psychological maltreatment. So child abuse. You know, you could raise your kids to be loving and respectful, or you could inflict lifelong trauma by threatening them with probably one of the most terrifying things they've ever seen in their lives. They also consult a folklorist about the topic. I'm not too sure what one of those are, but my gut feeling tells me it's probably something to do with folklore. The guy has a printed out picture of a troll face behind him, as well as a Shrek action figure on his cabinet. So it's safe to say that he's a well respected member in his field, and that I'm going to believe everything he says with 100% certainty. It's one thing to maybe say, if you don't be good, the boogeyman will come and get you at night. But it's another thing to actually have the boogeyman come to their window and threaten to get them that night. But I don't know, I'm not an expert, ask that child psychologist. No, not the troll face guy, the other one. The documentary mainly consists of interviews of people who are somewhat related to the whole thing, while cutting back and forth between the main focus. But it does start to get a little bit boring after seeing a few interviews of kids who have never actually had any real interaction with wrinkles. Although it is a bit interesting to see how they're reacting, because they're kids and they actually believe this stuff, to them it's a very real possibility that Wrinkles the Clown could come and get them at night. It kind of reminds me of being a kid and while trying to go to bed, having my brain imagine up the most horrific and brutal things that a child really shouldn't be thinking of. Which kind of leaves me thinking now, how could I possibly think of anything like that when I had absolutely nothing to relate it to at an age like that? You did that too, right? Just me again? Oh god. At least there was one entertaining moment from the interviews with the kids, where one of them said something along the lines of this. I think some people need to be scared sometimes, like if they're really sad or something, it might make them feel better. Yes, I'm sure it will buddy. It's also kind of amusing to see how other clowns are getting really annoyed by the whole scary clown trend that was going on at the time. Like, yeah, sure, it can't be good for business and all that. But how good was business really before this started happening? I would never have imagined a clown being a viable career option in the modern day. But then again, there's plenty of them on Twitter, so who knows. All of a sudden, the documentary on the creepy old man clown throws out a giant curveball making me feel like a clown, when it's revealed that the old man who we've been following around for almost an hour at this point is an actor and is not Wrinkles the Clown. Sorry, what? That's not Wrinkles the Clown. He doesn't live in this van. This isn't really what his life is like. Then don't mind me asking this then, but uh... Excuse me? Why have you just wasted nearly an hour of my time telling me this made up story? Or are we just getting really meta now or something? Wrinkles the Clown is a made up persona, so so is the guy who you think is Wrinkles the Clown. You've been tricked twice, you big old dummy. So what exactly was the point in seeing him barbecue up the fish and going to the strip club, etc? It doesn't leave me feeling like I've just had this giant bombshell of a twist dropped on me. It leaves me feeling like you've wasted my time. The most interesting part about the documentary was Wrinkles the Clown. Yeah sure, seeing kids talk about creepy YouTube videos for 20 minutes is fun and all that, but that's not exactly why I'm here. Apart from him, who was the most interesting part of this for me by the way, you've got children being children, a f***ed off clown, and troll face lover boy over here. Maybe I'm just like different in the head or something, one too many concussions or something like that. But if they just followed the real Wrinkles the Clown for the whole duration of this documentary, it would have made for a much better viewing experience. I get that the whole old guy living in a van nomad style 
who could be anyone, anywhere sort of thing, really leans into the whole mystery. But don't get me really involved, just to have Ashton Kutcher come out and tell me I've been punked. When it comes to the real creator of Wrinkles the Clown, he's nothing like the fictional character who we've just seen. Not like I'd be able to tell you on looks alone or anything like that, because he looks like he's auditioning to host the next anonymous announcement or something. But his story is also interesting, which leaves me thinking, why could we have not just had this for the whole thing? He explains that the original under the bed scene was actually all set up, but honestly, I don't think anybody under the age of 11 believed it wasn't. It was something that he and a buddy put together and took the footage and edited it to seem more believable before uploading it online and creating all of the wrinkle spotted social media pages. And it was actually kind of genius. Inside Edition, NBC News, Jimmy Fallon and that annoying James Corden all featured the story of Wrinkles the Clown, fueling the fire that is, well, was, the mystery behind Wrinkles the Clown. It's, uh, it's just a shame that they went and exposed it all as a setup. They kind of had a good thing going, to be honest. The doc pivots for a second, and then it starts showing us the ensuing fallout that Wrinkles Legacy had. The copycats. The people who looked at it and thought, you know what would be a great idea? Dressing as a clown and threatening people's lives. There's absolutely no flaws in that logic. Which is interesting to know, because, let's be real, these idiots really did outshine the original inspiration when it came to being portrayed on the media. I remember waking up one day, looking at social media and thinking, Oh look, there's a new trend about people dressing up as killer clowns. I wonder what could happen next. And then people started eating Tide Pods. Before we finish up, I'd like to quickly say that we're nearing the release of mine and my girlfriend's clothing brand, Morbid Minds. Here's one of the designs that you can expect. It is a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde design. So check the description for all the Morbid Minds social medias, and as well as the normal Big Will social medias, because, you know, we all need to see a bit of shit posting from time to time. And before we finish up, I'd like to say a big thank you to my patrons. Thank you to Dom, Bort, Hunters263, Rebecca Pitts, Total Drama Rebooted, A Dandy in Space, Martin Brannan, Natasha Twyman, Rin and Whiskey, Jarrett CBs, Nicholas, Pascal Mathis, Fighting the Pirates, Taj Sandhu. Richard McGowan III, Macy J, Reese Harford, Horatio, Jamie Thompson, Ramey Patterson, Chris, Michelle, Newcomb, Fabian, Dennis, Wade Knott, Ike, Mr. J2, Monopogy, and Ashley L. Wintz. So a big thank you to my patrons, and thank you to everyone else for watching.